Hey everybody, Scalecrafty here again. Uh, the other day, a friend of mine from work asked me if uh, he said he got a couple old machetes and if I could rehandle them for them. So uh, he sent the machetes over to me, and I took a look. And well, the first machete you could see here, it's a typical Harbor Freight and uh, or Chinese uh, garbage machete. This isn't even worth the time and effort it is it's even bent a little bit not even worth the time and effort it takes to uh, fabricate a handle but i did one just to, to keep good in practice this is a i made this actually from a bed slat and i used a dowel quarter inch dowel and i uh i fabricated a handle form so i'm still in the process of putting a couple of coats of finish on there but that'll get them through with this but it's not worth the time and effort to do that however the second one I was looking at the uh, the handle and I was looking at the machete. This is quite thick. It's about six millimeters or uh, uh, three thirty seconds. It's pretty thick. It's a, it's a very heavy piece of material, uh, metal. I uh, cleaned it up a little bit, but you could see the scarring. That's from a high carbon steel blade. And the handle, I was looking at this and it's, it's on there really solid. So I said, you know what? I saw that markings on here and you could see it says uh, Dumas, uh, Sia Fondu. Uh, which is French, so I said, let me look this up on the internet, and lo and behold, I found out that this bayonet, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, machete, was used from uh, World War One and uh, World War Two, even up to Vietnam. It was issued to the French Senegal troops and North Africa and stuff, and uh, check out what I found on the internet. And trying to research this blade, I found uh, Ratfrog186 on Blade Forms posted a really good post. He said here that... Uh, it was issued to these uh, French colonial troops from Senegal in the beginning of World War One, and uh, he he states three manufacturers that he knows of: Dumas, was, which is the one we have here, and two others. And uh, he also says that it carried on production to uh, 1939 into the 40s, and and I heard into Vietnam. He also posted some interesting photographs of uh, period photographs. Here's a, a French colonial soldier from World War One holding the machete in question and you could see it was part of and there's another picture that he posted that has uh this is a, a world war one picture in the trench and you could see he's wearing the uh on on his belt here he's wearing the uh the scabbard you could see for the machete so very interesting uh history on this blade pretty amazing right so after finding that out with this uh this machete, I said, well, you know, we have to keep it original as possible. So what I did is uh, this was covered with mold and, and it might have had some other paint on. I took a paint remover. I got it back to the original wood. I gave it about six coats of lemon oil. This is really nice. The patina is good a nice feel to it. Uh, a little oiling on the blade. There is no, not much pitting, just scarring. Not a bad problem. I don't want to do any polishing or anything because like I said, reenactors and guys like this, I've seen this uh, machete sell on ebay uh for 150 dollars so it's quite a valuable piece this this has the original scabbard uh the scabbard is uh leather it would be very easy to uh to fabricate a new one because it's a very simple design if you went to a saddle maker or a leather worker and uh other than that uh this is a really nice piece so i'm glad i didn't mess with it if i would have taken that handle off and tried to no matter what kind of handle i put on there it would have really cut the value down of this so that's why you always got to check and do your research before you try and restore anything that you shouldn't be messing with. So this is that uh, 1916 maybe to 1940. Uh, I'm assuming it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely a, a relic and it's a, a French machete. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Talk to you soon.